okay, so this product we have here is called M.O. Bacter. Granular, completely different to the lawn sand, but its action is completely different as well. So this is actually a fertilizer. And within it, you actually have bacteria, which is going to eat the moss. So the feed will last about 100 days. Um, it smells, it smells a little bit like fish bait actually, a bit nasty, but anyway, I keep it in this, keep it nice and dry. Right, so it contains a high potash content and the moss dies by indirect action. Being organic, it's not going to scorch the lawn, even if it doesn't rain. So that's not a problem, but you want to water this in. If it doesn't rain, you want to water it in within about seven days. Uh, after 14 to 21 days, moss will turn brown and then die before it drops down into the thatch level beneath the grass. Within this is active bacteria, and they will then eat the moss and the thatch, and then it will turn it into beneficial plant food for the grass to feed from. So no raking needed. Now on the other lawn, with the lawn sand, once the moss has blackened and died off we've then got to rake it out so that would be a scarification job which we'll do as a, a separate video when that's ready which should be in about two weeks time a week's just a little bit too short two weeks probably enough so we'll have a look that a look at the back lawn again to see how that blackens up and then we can scarify this one however should mean that I'm just doing a, a basic treatment on this front lawn and I'm just using this and it should mean that I don't actually need to do anything else on these two front lawns at all. I'm not going for Wimbledon or Fantastic Golf Course. These are utility lawns, they just want to look green and I just want them in as good a condition as possible. So this is a test run to see how this product does. I've never used it before. I only found out about it last year and I actually got this early last year before the weather went mad and I didn't get to use it. So we're gonna run this through. So the lawn sand was 80 grams per square meter. This is a bit more, it's anything between 100 and 150 grams per square meter. Now the settings that you get, or the details that tells you what settings to use, say that you only need to do one pass, but I tend to always do two, do the crisscross like we did on the back garden. So I've halved the rate on the spreader, and then I'll go both ways. Now the lawn that we're on here, this doesn't have much moss in it at all. My other lawn is about 60% moss. So it'll be interesting to see how it works on both. Now in addition, this has added magnesium. It'll strengthen the grass and it'll give a stronger, greener color. Sort of something a bit more like British Racing Green. And I've just got a cup of tea. Thank you. Right, I'm gonna stop for a second and have some of my tea because the missus always makes a fantastic cover. And then we'll come back, load up the spreader, and then we'll put this product down and see how we go. Back in a minute. Okay, so we've got the spreader loaded up. I've cleaned it out of the lawn sand first. And because I don't know how this will go down, I've only half loaded to do the small lawn first, see how the drop rate goes, and then I can load a load more afterwards. Now, application time with the lawn sand Ideally, you want to be looking at March into April. This can go down any time between March and October because it's not specifically uh, a moss treatment, it's a fertilizer. Um, unusually, you tend to get, um, for most lawn feed and weeds, which I'll show you in another video, you have very specific spring feeds and then autumn feeds because the NPK ratio varies depending on the time of year that you're putting your feed down. I'll go through in more detail what NPK is and how it works when I do that video. So I'll take you over to the other lawn and we'll get this on and see how it goes down. Right, as you can see, it's only a teeny little lawn, um, so it shouldn't take long to do, only a couple of minutes. And then we'll do the same feed on this side. Here we go.
Okay, so it doesn't look like it's actually put much down. Don't be tempted to up the rate on the actual drop rate. If you do that, you'll end up burning your lawn very probably or overfeeding it. So whatever the manufacturer's details say the drop rate should be, stick to it. Don't change it at all. Okay, so uh, now I'm gonna treat the other lawn. I think there's plenty in the spreader to actually do this one. And I'll do the same crisscross pattern so we get an even spread across. Okay, so there we have it, two lawn care programs started, one traditional, one not so traditional. The MO Bacter, uh, I, I have no idea how that's going to work. I've heard mixed stories, some say it's brilliant, some say it's done nothing. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it works on these two lawns. One has 10-15% moss on it, the other one has a lot more. But the smaller one's much more difficult to get to. It tends to get more sun, so it tends to be a lot drier. So that will probably need a good watering in. Um, the next three or four days, I think, are looking like they're gonna be quite dry and sunny, sort of 19, 20 degrees, not particularly cold, and almost no rain by the looks of it. So that will probably have to get watered at the front. Um, I've gotta water my pots anyway, so I can do all that at the same time. The rear lawn, uh, we're now in a standing pattern, waiting for things to happen. So the lawn sand will burn the moss, fingers crossed, over the next couple of weeks. At that point we will scarify out the dead moss and also remove any thatch that's in the lawn as well. Um, I won't do that at all on the front lawn because it shouldn't be needed. So everything that's there, it might need a scarification in the autumn. I'm just going to have to see how the product works. We'll just have to wait and see. So once the scarifying's done, uh, we can aerate the lawn, we can level the lawn, there's quite a few dips and bumps, especially around where the whirly gig sits in the garden, where we walk around and put the washing out, the ground has sunk, so we need to re-level that off, and there's a few bumps and dips, I just make it a bit smoother, mainly to show you guys how we, how we do it and what you use to do it. Um, the aeration, um, the lawn tends, the back lawn tends to have an issue with not so much flooding, but staying very wet for a very long time. It doesn't drain very well. Um, I'll specifically go through that and all the different ways it can be done. Because um, you can do everything from something like a cheap pair of shoes that will help you get some spikes into the soil um, to very large machines that cost an awful lot of money, um, but do a much better job. So we'll go through all the different options there. Now, one thing I'm actually gonna add to this series is costs. So I've been looking at other videos of this so all the products I'm using are available to the public um, all the tools are readily available to the public and it's all cost-effective now the spreader uh, that's an even green spreader from Scott's and that I think was £19.99 um, they tend to last really well you just got to make sure that you empty out the tray when you finish using it 
and store it somewhere where it's not going to get wet because it will get rusty. And I did have an old one that I left outside. I'd forgotten I'd left it out in the back and uh, it died. So I had to get that one about six years ago. The lawn sand, uh, that is Westland and that one is £13 for, I think it's a 20 kilo bag. And I think it will do 200 square meters. I think, I can't remember now, I'm gonna have to check. And uh, the MO Bacta, that is 40 pounds. That's quite a bit more expensive, but in theory, that's all you need to use. You don't need anything else, because it's got a fertilizer in it. With the back garden where we're using the lawn sand, we're going to be adding in uh, a feed and weed sometime later in the year and there could be other products that we may use and the front lawn here it might just be the ammo battery and nothing else so in theory that might be the cheaper option we just don't know how well it works so i'm just gonna have to do a comparison between the two um, the, the lawns are in the same area with the same sub base which is chalk it's ever so slightly outlined here so there should be a good comparison between the two to see how they compare. And that's it for the moment. So I've got my cup of tea, which I can now enjoy because I've finished. I'll get this posted up as soon as I can. Uh, hopefully have it done in the next couple of days. And then um, in between, there might be a couple of other videos. Uh, I'm still going to do the pH test. Um, which is only a short video, but it's just so you can get an idea of um, what type of soil you're working with as to whether or not you might need to add in um, lime or any other product that might change the pH balance of your soil. And I don't know whether or not I'm going to do the edge repairs yet. I might wait until um, the lawn's in a better condition. We'll have to wait and see. There's a few other bits. Um, one thing I am going to be doing is, a long time ago I did... Um, lawn edging with shears I might redo that because when I did it the sound was terrible because it was really really windy and no one could hear what I was saying so I may do that one again but in addition to that I've also got uh, a video to do which talks about edging up against hard surfaces so where you've got uh, brick driveways you know herringbone brickwork uh, crazy paving slabs concrete whatever um, and there's a few different ways you can do that so I may get that done in the meantime before we get round to doing the scarifying in a few weeks time thanks for watching guys hope the video was useful if you've got any questions leave them in the comments below and if you've got any requests for any particular videos that you want to see uh, leave those in the comments below and i'll see you again soon cheers